fucking baby and Roddy from the camp of this week. What are we doing here? They were being on board and why didn't somebody went out and got him? Yeah, so obviously it's great having him here. Um, he tested really well the other day, which is, which is great. And then on top of that, um, you know, the fact that we recruited him out of high school, more times than not, if we're going to do the transfer portal stuff, that's what I would prefer. It's not always going to work out like that, but um, in a short window, it's hard to get to know the guys the way we would like to get to know them before we bring them in our locker room or on campus. So that helped. Uh, I think it came down to us and, and his previous institution. Um, so we knew him pretty well. Um, and so far, so good. Obviously, he was a very, very talented guy out of high school. We looked at him as either a linebacker or a defensive end. You know, there's a bunch of guys like Jesse Lucchetta that we've recruited like that. He falls into that category, uh, but we're pretty excited about him. We're going to play him at defensive end. Um, that was kind of discussion between him and his high school coach. You know, is he a 3-4 outside linebacker or defensive end? A lot of times those guys are very similar, so uh, we're excited about having him here, especially at a position of need. You mentioned uh, during spring ball that, as you just said, a position of need. What sort of expectations do you have for him in the first year, seeing he's kind of switching back to that defensive end from what he was doing at that hybrid at Maryland? Yeah, I, 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 we have very high expectations, obviously. He played as a true freshman. Uh, in this conference already, so so that helps. Um, obviously, there's still a lot of work to do uh, to transition to a full-time defensive end, um, as well as learning the system and the playbook and all those types of things. But uh, his attitude's been great. You know, yesterday he put out, you know, best decision I've ever made in my life. So obviously he's adjusting well. Um, I love the kid. I've been super impressed with him. We did his official visit this weekend, although we had already committed because it just timing-wise didn't make sense for us or his family, and that went really well. I was able to spend more time with his mom, his dad, and his, his brothers, uh, so that was good as well. But we have really high expectations, but just like anything else, he'll get what he earns. James, where is TJ's rehab at, and how is he coming along? When do you expect him to be ready? Yeah, we expect him you know, ready by game one. Um, you know, I think it's a little bit different with a veteran player. Um, I think sometimes with younger players that haven't played a whole lot, you're kind of anxious, almost rushing them, you know, to get back as soon as you possibly can. But with a player as experienced as he is, um, you know, and, and PJ is a hard charging guy, we actually have to do the opposite and pull him back. Um, but mentally, he'll obviously be ready. And physically, he's pretty far along. I know yesterday I was talking to him, I'm reading his body language, I know him pretty well. Um, and I think he was a little frustrated, but that's because he wants to be 100% yesterday. And like I told him, he doesn't need to be 100% yesterday, but he's trending in the right direction. Um, our, our trainers and doctors have done a fantastic job with him. The doctor that did his surgery in New York did a fantastic job. So. Uh, obviously, we're excited about having him back, not just as a player, but as a leader as well. He's been he's been phenomenal, so uh, we're excited about him. James, well, you've got Hunter Norzad on campus last month. Can you talk about the process, made him a good fit, and what you've seen from him through a month on campus? Yeah, obviously, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say we got like a trend, but uh, being able to, to get some of these Ivy League guys that have had really good careers, we had some success with it last year, so, so that's helped. Um, but so far, so good. You know, he is a big, strong, powerful, thick guy. He tested really well uh, arriving on campus with his athleticism. Um, obviously, you know, he, he learns the playbook well, so that, that's, that's been very impressive uh, from our staff. Um, there's actually one of our new guys right there that just showed up. Um, but been very impressive. I think we got really good competition at the guard position. I think we got five guys that legitimately will be competing for those two starting jobs uh, with Golden and Landon and Sal and Hunter and somebody I'm missing. How many was that? JB. JB. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. And JB. 
um, and JB were really excited about it as well. Um, so that's a really that's a really good group. I think it's going to create a lot of competition. Uh, and then obviously one of those guys, you know, besides Nick Dawkins as well, also being able to train it at center too. So so hopefully we have a legitimate three D. How, how if at all has the uh, transfer transfer portal impacted the way you can go about recruiting quarterbacks? Are the numbers different? Do you need to get a different number of players each year, given that there's been so much movement with that particular position? Yeah, that position in general I think is problematic across the country. I think whenever you're in a situation where only one guy gets on the field, I still think there's a lot of value um, in, in having some patience and, and developing at that position, but that's not really a word in college football right now. Um, so, so I think our, our approach is, is still similar, but obviously your antenna is up, um, and it's something that you're going to be you're going to have to be kind of monitoring um, your current roster as well as guys you know that are out there, almost like a uh, almost like a pro player department in some ways. How do you evaluate what's going on with these practices? So, so much of it is player life. Right? How do you just sit back and evaluate what's happening in these groups? Yeah, we really don't. Um, you know, the player-led stuff, uh, you know, we're not involved in, obviously. So it's just feedback, uh, feedback from the players, you know, what they're saying about each other. Um, obviously, we get some of the work, you know, this year with the new rules that have been passed. So that's a little bit more helpful. Uh, but a lot of it is strength and conditioning and what the coaches are saying about the work that they're doing there, the numbers that they're putting up, that's always helpful as well. Um, you know, and then obviously the work that we're getting with them, I think there is some value in that. Um, but you know, we won't really know obviously until we get until we get into camp. Take some follow up on Mark's question. With the portal and the realities, is there more pressure and more challenges to make sure guys are getting their opportunities and stay happy and get the playing time so that they don't leave? No, but you better monitor your roster. You know, you, you, you better be monitoring your roster. And I think the old days of, you know, kind of a freshman coming in and kind of having to pay his dues and and those things um, are different. You, you, better, you better be monitoring your roster. You better be aware of your roster. You better be talking to the parents. Um, you better be talking to the high school coaches, all those things. That's where consistency on your staff is important because those relationships um, are already built, uh, but it's definitely something that you better be aware of. James, what's your early relationship like with Pat Craft? Is he the right guy to help this program take the next step? Yeah, I, you know, I've talked to Pat a bunch. Um, I know he was in my office yesterday. Uh, we walked around the, all the facilities and, and did that. Um, I've talked to him a bunch. I think the great thing um, that I've seen is I think we see college football similarly. I think we see college athletics similarly. So a lot of times, whether it was at Vanderbilt or Penn State, where I was having conversations and, and trying to convince people uh, on certain things, we don't have that. We, we kind of see things um, alike. So that's that's been really helpful. Uh, he's got tremendous energy. But we've talked a bunch. He caught off. I told you guys this story. I was out at, at, in Arizona for the Big Ten meetings at the old Fiesta Frolic. I'm not sure what it's called now. And, uh, you know, he called one morning and he texted me. He said, could you talk? I said, yes. We had a really good conversation. And um, at the end, he's like, well, what are you going to do the rest of the day? I'm like, well, it's 5.15 a.m. right now. And he's like, oh, my God, I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was you know, so early in the morning. But I love that. I love the conversations and the dialogue that we're having and, and you know, still building that relationship and still getting to know each other, but also uh, trying to help him with Penn State and kind of the learning curve because because we got to hit the ground running. We're gonna talk about that. Yeah, I think that's that's a big part of it. Um, you know, his philosophy on it and how he wants to approach it with our program. Um, yeah, I think that's that's a big part of it. I I, I agree with it. We're going to talk to some assistants today, obviously. If you've been a guy that's been around for a while and maybe the last couple of years don't go the way that you want and you start to feel that pressure to perform, how do you reconcile pressure that builds up over a few years versus embracing what you have in front of you in the moment and not letting those two things get in each other's way? Yeah, I think the first thing that we try to do is, is show examples of guys that 
kept trust in the process and late in their careers had success. Everybody's path and everybody's journey is different. I think that we talk about comparison be, of the comparison being the thief of joy. Um, so we try to you know show them examples of that. Um, but but I do think your point is a good one. It's harder than it's ever been before, and, and social media and. You know, uh, Chris Peterson will show me, like, there'll be an article that comes out, like, this is a do-or-die season for player X. And I don't know if I necessarily see it that way because there's just been there's just been so many different kind of stories throughout my career. Um, God forbid a guy gets better as a senior that's in high school in the recruiting process as well as, well as at Penn State. So, um we just try to get them to, to trust in the process, um, make sure that there's there's as much dialogue and conversation and communication as possible, so we can tell them, you know, what they're doing well, where they need to improve. Um, and I also think there's value in that with the players, you know, when the players are able to give feedback to each other across the ball or at the same position, you know, that's that's valuable as well. But it's a fine line, right? It's be present and where you're at and maximize in each day learn from your past and you know be striving towards where you want to go in the future in terms of goals and aspirations but that's that's the that's the hard part balancing all those things is that a challenge for coaches though i mean if you've got a, if you want to do something or an assistant wants to do something and it hasn't happened and you feel that over a longer period of time then then maybe you go, well, this team is this or isn't that, or these are the strengths or these are the weaknesses. You want to get something done, but maybe how, how do you figure out how to do that and not get in your own way coaching? Yeah, I, again, I think that's where you, where you have to be careful and you just you say, okay, you know, what are our strengths as a team right now? What are our weaknesses as a team right now? A lot of it is based off what we did during spring ball, but with the new talent that's come in, um, we're going to have to go into to summer camp with ideas. We think this is who our identity is, but it may not be after two weeks. I just been, you know, I just had them guys do a project on offense, short yardage, goal line, uh, wildcat coming out, things like that. You know, from a run game perspective, who we think we're going to be this season, and then kind of go through the first couple weeks of camp, and is that who we are? Um, but you know, I, 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 to be honest with you, I try not to do a whole lot of that looking too far ahead. What do we got to do today to maximize our opportunity here? I do think the transfer portal has changed things. Uh, you look at new coaches. Um, I look at Coach Shrews here. You know, you look at new coaches coming in, whether it's football or basketball or any other sport, you got an opportunity to turn over your roster quickly um, and, and make some changes where in years past it's taken a long period of time. But as much as I possibly can, I, I try to just stay stay present. You got to be planning for the future as well. I get that, but the best thing you can do for your future is take care of today. James, James what is this it? summer like for you guys now? Uh, are you, do you go on vacation, the staff, or are you guys ever off, or have you already done? That? Yeah, same as it is every year. Uh, nothing's changed as of this stage with the recruiting calendar. Um, so we'll take our time in, in July. Um, you know, I did I did push the staff meeting back till 9 a.m. this morning, if that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, gave gave everybody some time, take their kids to school. Obviously, you know, the summer can be a grind. You know, when we have summer camps and seven on sevens all weekend and they're long days, so you know where we can find some time during the week to kind of balance all those things. Um, but we'll we'll get our time in July. You know, and that's specifically the coaches, the strength staffs here here all summer and. The players will get another little bit of a break right before camp starts. James, in the, James, in the in the NIL space, a lot of these groups that have cropped up here and elsewhere, how comfortable are you getting with that? Do you feel like that's going to be a positive in the long haul for Penn State? Yeah, there is no long haul. Like it needs to be now. Yeah, okay, it, then it needs, for now. it needs to be yesterday. Um, the long haul in college football, college football has changed probably more in the last five years than it has in maybe the previous 20. Um, so it's not, NIL is, is not long haul. It's, we got to do everything we possibly can to put Penn State in the best position this season. Um, then also protecting our own roster for the future. 
and then also putting ourselves in a position to be able to tell a story and show the incoming guys what we're doing and how we're taking care of our um, our, our program and our current roster. James Manny mentioned in the spring that some coaches have mentioned numbers specifically what they need to be competitive once they have a number. Yeah, more than the numbers you've heard. James, we heard from Manny in the spring talking about a good motor and wanting to see what he looked like when he got to campus. What's your initial impression there? Uh, Manny had mentioned wanting to see him involved in that middle linebacker competition. Manny's not here today, so I, I appreciate it. You're talking about Abdul. Abdul Carter, yeah. yeah. It, to be honest, that's who was just walking by back there. I thought everybody's camera would whip around. Uh, first of all, the numbers here today are great. Appreciate you guys all coming out to support. I hope this summer. There he is again, actually. Uh, no? no. <laughs> it's too hard to move him. Yeah, I get it. It's too hard. Um, but to be honest with you, today's his first day. So he just cleared the physicals. Um, and we can't do anything until all those things have happened. So he just cleared. Um, today's his first day. So it's, it's hard for me to say. I, I think those guys showed up on Sunday. Some of those guys were able to get up um, you know, during the spring or during the summer and get their physicals knocked out or their new store, student orientation or whatever it may be. And he's just doing that. So it's it's too early for me to say. Obviously, he looks great. He's super mature. Um, you know, we're excited about working with him. And that's kind of where we're trying to figure out where where will he be. I think with uh, the competition that we feel pretty good about, Kobe and Elsden at Mike Linebacker, I think has created some flexibility with him. Do we either leave him at Mike or do we put him uh, at the boundary backer uh, and, and see if he can if he can factor in there. That, that's where we kind of got to figure out. Obviously, it's hard to play Mike Linebacker as a true freshman. It's a lot on that guy's plate being the quarterback of the defense. So we'll balance those things out. But physically, I think long term, he's got a, he's got a future there. James, James going back to the question. question on NIL, one number that's out there is 13 million a year for roster management. Are you saying that Penn State needs more than that? I, I guess the question is, I don't know what schools you're talking about, but if we want to compete with the schools that you guys all write articles about us competing with, why wouldn't our number be the same as others? James, going back to the, going back to the summer, is there something that you specifically do just to I, I guess explain that. At some point, can we do this where we flip it around? And I can ask yeah. questions like, if, if, if school X we're supposed to be competing with, well, the number if, they, if, they, the if school X has a number and we're supposed to be competing with school X, why would our number be different? Let's, let, let, let's do this at some point. Let's flip it around. Cameras on you. <laughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. Yeah, going back to the summer, is there something specifically you do to reset, recharge mentally, emotionally, physically before you get into camp in the season? I, I can't get off this. If, if you guys could, <laughs> message me. Send me a message on why our numbers would be different than the people we're supposed to keep competing with. Explain that to me. I, I don't. I don't get it. Well, that number recharge seemed huge. Recharge it. <laughs> huh? That number seemed huge. Okay. Okay. Hold through. on a second. Hold on a second. The number. Who determines the number? If you if you sell your house. It's not the thirteen million. That's not what I'm asking. You. <laughs> That's not what I'm asking. You're missing the point. If you're selling your house, do you determine the number? Or no, you don't. You hope. No, no. Buyer. The market determines. The market determines the value of your house, and what one person may seem huge, another. The market determines that. So if the number is huge everywhere, then what? If the number is huge everywhere, so recharging the battery, things like this, get me juiced up and get me going. <laughs> um, you know, my family is is the biggest thing. Um, you know, my daughter's here right now, my oldest daughter, uh, my youngest daughter was here earlier, um, my wife is in and out, uh, that's, that's probably the biggest thing for me, um, spending some time around friends and family, I got a really small family, but spending time around, time around friends and family, so typically during that July that you guys are asking about, usually we'll take uh, staff with us, or friends with us, or family with us. Destiny was just with us for the long weekend. Destiny and Leanne, we went and had a great time. Um, so when you 
get away, you try to get away, but as you guys all know, with cell phones and emails and things like that, it's it's hard to truly get away, and as a head coach, you never really do. Um, but having places that we can get away, my wife loves places that are really far um, and that don't have great reception. Uh, I don't love those places, but she does. Um, but yeah, just try to do that, spend, spend the time I can. And to be honest with you, I like coming to the office. You know, I, I, I enjoy what I do. That's where she always wants us to get out of town because if we're in town, I'm, I'm coming in. I'm coming in. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys. Thank you.